Are you ready to witness the most offensive Mario game in all of gaming history? Yes, apparently there's the most offensive Mario game out there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if someone out there made a fan-made game about the uh, the main sponsor of Nintendo of all, which is Mario, because he is the main boy himself of Nintendo himself. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, once again, I want to give a shout out to, uh, Yamazuki, Team Yamazuki, or Nightmare Ninja, uh, for this, uh, for this video, once again, so shout out to you, man. Um, <laughs> so this is the most offensive Mario game there is. Once again, it's by Thomas Game Docs. It's it's the uh, it's the guy that I reacted to when I reacted to um, that you can place an order via the Nintendo Wii, like you can order, like like it's it's another, it's another way of um, like Deliveroo or just eat or or uh, 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 like that, but it's like. Chinese or Japanese or Korean. I put that context. I put that context. I put that context. I can't even speak. I put that context into a meme, didn't I? <laughs> uh, you know the you know the meme which goes Chinese, Japanese, Vietnamese, Kodamese. <laughs> What is wrong with me? <laughs> what is wrong with me? Oh, uh, now that was offensive. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> with that awkward stuff out of the way, um, I am going to leave the original video of this down below in the description for you guys to check out as well. Uh, it's by Thomas Game Docs, and I'll also leave my social medias as well down below once I uh, finish through with this video, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll explain the rest. All right, so without any further ado, let's get this video started, shall we? In three, two, one, go. What is the most offensive Mario game? Well, if you asked me that question a year ago, I wouldn't have a good answer for you. Mario games aren't offensive. That's the point, isn't it? But in November last year, I got talking to someone who thought differently. A video game preservationist who goes by the username Togamet2. And Togamet told me about a video game that's both offensive and impossible to play nowadays. You quite literally cannot get your hands on it. This is the story of Lily Frankie Theatre, the most offensive Mario game you've never heard of before. I haven't heard of it. So, this is a man called Lily Frankie. In Japan, he's pretty famous. He's been on TV, he's won awards, and as an actor, he's been in more than 40 films. He's also a little bit cuckoo. He's got a strange sense of humour, and he likes to share it with the world. He once said in an interview that when he's writing, he never ever goes back to rewrite a sentence or make any changes. He just leaves it exactly how it was. So yeah, Lily Frankie is a bit of a character, that's for sure. And in the 1990s, Lily Frankie was looking for his next thing to make. His next book, his next movie, his next whatever. But it turned out his next project would end up being neither of those. That's right, Lily Frankie was about to make a game 
with Nintendo. Well, let's see how this goes down. So, you might have heard of a device called the Satellaview. It was an add-on for the Super Famicom console in Japan, which allowed it to receive satellite broadcasts. Nintendo would beam through the air games, save files, audio, music, and what they called magazines. They're not exactly what you'd normally consider a magazine, but they're sort of similar. And these magazines covered all kinds of topics. There were magazines about beauty, magazines about sport. And then, from time to time, Nintendo would release one that was a little more unique, weird, or bizarre even. And in 1995, Nintendo partnered with one of Japan's biggest celebrities, Lily Frankie, to produce a series of magazines of his choosing. Lily Frankie was almost entirely in charge of it all, and the magazines that Lily Frankie produced were a mixture between strange, shocking, and even offensive at times. Plus, they all featured Super Mario in them. Their name was Lily Frankie Theatre. So, as far as we know, there were six episodes of Lily Frankie Theatre broadcast. However, when the Satellaview satellite service ended, these magazines were also rendered impossible to view. But one man in Japan recorded some of these broadcasts all the way back in the 1990s and kept them on VHS tapes for the next 20 years. Then, in 2018, he uploaded them to a YouTube channel called Kunkun Kun. And thanks to him, footage of four of the six magazines have been recovered. There's also a fifth one, which is a little special. I'll get to that later. But first, let's take a look at the four magazines that Kun 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 recorded. So, the first one is from November the 11th, 1995. Mario and Toad get put in prison for 20 years. Now, Toad is only 15 years old here. So, he's worried that when he gets released, he'll be 35. Luckily, Mario has a plan. He and Toad are going to break out of prison. They're going to dig a tunnel under the ground. But using what? Well, this is where things get a little gross. Mario pulls a spoon out of his butt. <laughs> recoils, complaining that it smells like feces. <laughs> Toad has another issue. What? It's made of concrete, so the spoon won't even work. It can't dig through it. And so Mario tells Toad to try digging using his bare hands. The scene ends with the two still stuck in prison. So that's the kind of energy these magazines have. They're not all quite so dark, though. Which brings us to the second entry in the series. It's a sequel to the prison break story from before. The scene opens with both Mario and Toad still stuck in jail. The spoon was unsuccessful, as were Toad's hands. Which is when Mario pulls out an electric drill. Where did you never, pull that off? It's never explained where this drill came from. And to be quite honest, I don't want to know. <laughs> anyway, yeah, me neither. Drill, Mario begins to dig a tunnel underneath the prison cell, with Toad following behind. After a while, Toad gets a little worried. We're still digging? He asks, to which Mario says he'll never stop digging until they're free. Eventually, the two see daylight. Hooray! But when they get above the ground, something seems off. They slowly realise. They've ended up in Brazil, of all places. And that's right, Mario and Toad somehow managed to dig hundreds upon hundreds of miles under the ground, all the way from Japan to Brazil in South America. How on earth did they manage to do that? Maybe Toad was right. Maybe they should have been a little cautious of how long the journey took. So they went and all Brazil, the way down Toad to the south. Toad seems a little worried. He knows nothing about Brazil, other than the fact that he's stuck there. But Mario, on the other hand, is quite happy to put his feet up and take in the sun. And so the broadcast ends with both Mario and Toad stranded in Brazil. Hooray! What? So, that's two of the six magazines. Now, of the remaining four, one of them is completely lost, at least for now. There's no footage or record of that magazine, so we're going to leave it out of the picture. What okay. about the other three? Well, this final magazine is very special, and I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> and then there's the two other magazines oh, that ended up on YouTube. 
thanks to Kun Kun Pun recording footage of them back in the 90s. And trust me, these two are much weirder than the ones we've seen so far. The first features none other than Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. He meets with Toad and Mario and talks to them about Windows 95. Yeah, the operating system, Windows 95. I have no idea whether or not Bill Gates gave permission to be featured in this strange broadcast, although I think it's pretty unlikely. And then the episode concludes with the plush figure of Bill balancing Windows 95 on top of his head. Wonderful. Then, in the next tape, things go even further downhill. And this time, the whole magazine is hand-drawn. It almost looks like it was drawn by a child. And then, this guy here, I'm guessing he's meant to be Lily Frankie himself, the man behind all of this madness. I could be wrong, though. Either way, this character picks up a game controller and starts to control Mario himself. Then he travels to the depths of hell. Looks cosy, that's for sure. Then, finally, we see him engage in a pretty salacious act with a lobster. A lobster! Let me remind you, this is a Nintendo game. Just think of the lobster! But none of this compares to the final magazine. Oh, broadcast. no. This is where things go from strange to plain controversial. Not racist or sexist or anything like that, but certainly very, very off-brand for the Nintendo characters. So, like I said, this broadcast was not recorded by Kun Kun Kun. However, that doesn't mean it's been lost forever. If you remember right at the beginning, the video game preservationist I was talking to, Togamet2, he was the guy who told me about all of this. And he actually partnered up with another preservationist called Master Fox to recreate the original code for this final broadcast as closely as possible. He sent me the file, and so now I am able to show you the last of the Lily Frankie Theatre magazines. Let's take a look. Oh my god. Here it is, the last Lily Frankie broadcast, the most infamous one of them all. Now, this time it's a little different. I'm actually controlling this thing. I have to physically press a button to view the next image, just like Kun 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 had to do back in the 90s. In fact, this is as close as I can possibly get to being there at the time. So, the magazine begins with a short backstory, and it's a little strange. In a low-lying part of a heartwarming city, Mario works as a plumber. One day, an employee from another shop announces they have been made Mario's wife. Due to the shock of the townspeople, Mario hides himself away from public. So, the scene opens with Toad and Peach sitting alone, pondering Mario's disappearance. I wonder where the boss has gone to, says Toad. He really is a good-for-nothing jerk, replies Peach. Then Toad approaches her. And here's where things get a little... What? This scene shows Peach and Toad engaging in, um, a sexual activity. What? are just dolls, after all. But it makes a lot of sense. Oh my god! Because the very next moment, who walks in but Mario? Mario. Himself. Peach and Toad jump back in shock. Boss, I was so worried, Toad says to Mario. But in his rage, Mario is having none of it and kills Toad. Yes, he jumps on Friggin <laughs> him then and there. Then Peach turns to Mario. Darling, give me a break already. My heart was yearning for you. But Mario is having none of it. All he can see is red. Pure, blind rage. And so he crouches, then takes a flying leap into the air and kills Peach. What? Peach and Toad lying there, dead on the ground. Dead. Mario By Mario. Different. Perhaps if he was a different kind of guy, he would be mourning the loss of his friends and family. But not Mario. Instead, he cheerily states, Who, me? I just got myself a new girlfriend. <laughs> a new girlfriend? The ghosts of Toad and Peach fly in. Huh? We're so surprised, they exclaim. Who could this new girlfriend be? Who's his new girlfriend? It was none other than Bowser. What? Enemy. Toad and Peach regale in shock at the revelation. And that's 
where the broadcast ends, with the two victims floating away, with Bowser and Albert dropped to Mario, and with Mario left as a murderer. A huge thanks to many, many people for helping this video come together. My amazing patrons who supported this financially, Togamet2 who told me the whole story, for his friend Masterfox for helping restore that last broadcast, and for Uchi on Discord for helping me with translation. I couldn't have made this video without any of these people, so thank you to all of them. And until next time, I'll see ya. Bye. What the legit hell did I just watch? What in the absolute of all that is holy did I just watch right in front of me? What the hell was that? <laughs> that... <laughs> Lily Frankie, you are one cuckoo clock of an individual. One cuckoo clock of an individual. My God. What is in that guy's mind? I will never know. Well, I kind of do now because, because of that. Oh my god. <laughs> what? 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 Oh my god. Oh. Oh, man. Anyways. Thank you, Nightmare Ninja. For sending me this video of the most offensive Mario game there is, and... I will say this was certainly, um, this was certainly disturbing, disturbing. So yeah, um, I guess, I guess with all that is left of me to say is um, I will leave the original video down below in the description and also uh, I'll leave my social medias which I will explain them now so thank you very much everyone for watching my reaction to the most offensive Mario game by Thomas Game Docs. And if you have enjoyed my reaction to this video, then make sure to hit the like button. And if you are new to my channel and want to check out more of my videos, then you can by hitting the subscribe button and turning on the notification bell for more updating content when I upload my next video. My Twitter is at Lucifer21. My BitChu is also called Lucifer. My Instagram is firsttom17 and my TikTok is at elusiveowl2. So, with all that being said, what? I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. I